We've just talked about quality in terms of the deliverable uh, of, of uh, the effort of the organization and how we classify it using the Kano model and the theory of attractive quality. Now what we want to do is turn to understanding quality in the design of the process. And so the idea here is that quality is something that is delivered by a process of steps sequentially improving how we do things step by step as the deliverable moves from the very beginning phases to the final phases. And so what I want to do is, is to talk about this a little bit using a life cycle model in terms of how things are developed. This is a model I created about 16 years ago. And what we see is at the very beginning, we're going to focus on how do we consciously make an effort to design a deliverable outcome. So we think about the Kano model, for instance, we realize that attractive quality is a thing that we really want to put in the model. And so to understand what that is, we have to understand what does a customer want. We have to get this concept of intimacy. So we understand the expectations of customers. How do we go beyond them? What do we actually put in the design versus what do we take out of the design or not include? This is about the business case of the product. And so we're trying to understand what is the choice that we make. And as we go through the delivery process of defining a product or defining a process, the next step we come to is no longer just uh, deciding about a generally unconstrained choice. We're going to actually make a choice, quality in what is delivered. And so to make that choice, we have to get the right ideas. What are the things that are going to make a difference that will create this attraction in the quality so that the people who look at that say, Love at first sight, we really want to have it. Or satisfaction at first sight, that's a really great process. So what we see is we're going to move into making a promise. The promise is the choice that comes out of all of these considerations. So the promise you can think of in terms of a product, maybe as a specification. In terms of a product, a process rather, it's maybe the description of the working model of the process or the tasks that people are going to do as they're doing the work. And so it, it's the uh, documentation of the working steps in the process. And at that point in time, we're no longer just making choices and making right ideas. What we're doing is we're saying this is what we promise to give as an expectation for performance. So we're setting a baseline. And at this baseline level, what we're saying is this is what we want to have in terms of deliverable to customers. The output of this then becomes an entitlement. When we make a promise, we should fulfill the promise. So when we look at what the customer gets, we see there can be a gap in performance here. And this gap is between quality as promised, this is the one dimensional quality feature. This is what we're going to compare the difference between what we get and what the customer actually gets. And here we have to have the must be quality. And so as we're looking at this, if we have any gap in performance there, what we see is there's a gap in conformity. And so what is happening now, this is quality in how we deliver to customers. This is in doing work. And so what we've seen is now there's two different components, the planning of work, the creation of the design, and then the actual performance of work or the doing of work. And so as we think about this, this is process doers, process facilitators making work happen. And then on the other side, we have process designers who are actually creating the process by which things are done. So the process designers have to get the right work, and then the process doers have to implement it in the right way. And through this process, sequentially thinking about how we're going to do the design, structuring the work, and then performing the work, we consciously design quality into the outcome of the deliverable in the product. And so what we see is the product quality is actually built through a series of stages in the process of how people work together to create the deliverable, which results in a product or a service experience that customers can actually appreciate. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn to thinking about and how does Six Sigma or Lean Six Sigma help us actually to improve the quality and the outcome by working on the processes by which we do this work. So we'll continue this on our next video.